Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. It's brought to you by Adorama. It's the camera store that has every conceivable piece of photography equipment, so make sure you check them out at adorama.com. Well, we are continuing. This is part two of help with which lens should I buy, specifically which lens should you buy for portrait photography. And so joining me today is Natasha. She is going to be helping us understand some things about the distance of our camera's lens from our subject. Now, if you didn't check it out, make sure you watch last week's episode where I talked about field of view and depth of field and distance from subject to lens, all kinds of technical things. But now we're gonna put that into practice in this very small studio. Now, one thing I wanna point out is this isn't a tiny studio, but we're trying to emulate a tiny studio specifically because a lot of people want to buy wide angle lenses when they shoot in very, very small studios. But a lot of seasoned professionals will say, don't do that. Make sure you use a longer lens, a 50 or 70 or longer. And so what we've done here in this studio is we've sort of shrunk it by not using this space back here. So we're not using this intentionally. We've got a gray background back here. So we're trying to shrink this studio just a little bit to make it look more like a tiny studio. All right, so why is it that so many photographers will tell you to buy a lens that is 70 millimeters or longer, maybe 50 at the very edge to shoot portraits. Well, it all has to do with the angle of view problems that we get, and most importantly, the distance between our camera and our subject and what that does. So let's start with a misnomer, and that is that wide angle lenses distort faces. They actually don't. It's the distance. So let me walk you through this. So what I have here is I have a Canon 5D Mark III and I've got a 24 to 105 lens. So I've got a wide angle lens and I've got a telephoto lens all in one. And so I first want to show you that wide angle lenses don't actually distort faces. It's the distance that does that. So I'm going to go back here. There's a little stool and I'm going to shoot two pictures. Now the first one I'm going to shoot at 24 millimeters and we're gonna get everything in this shot. So it is the studio and it's Natasha and it's the background lights. That's okay. What I'm doing is I'm keeping Natasha's face right in the center of the screen. Now I'm gonna take a second shot from the exact same location, but this time zoomed in. I'll take a picture of that. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take these two shots and I am going to crop both of them so that they match. So we have the same amount of Natasha's face in both shots. Now watch what happens when we crop them and put them side by side. You'll notice that the wide angle shot, well her face looks the same as it does from the telephoto shot. The wide angle lens is not distorting her face. But watch what happens when we put our wide angle lens on our camera and I fill the frame by getting close. Now what I'm doing, instead of going far away and cropping, which you shouldn't do, I'm gonna get the uh, frame nice and full by getting close, and watch what happens. I have to get really, really close, and that is not something you normally wanna do with your model because look at this shot. Now our face looks wonky. It is distorted because we're so darn close that it starts to warp things, and it makes Natasha feel a little bit uncomfortable. Because nobody wants a camera like rah, right in their face. So that's really the main reason why you don't want a wide angle lens because you have to get really close. It makes things wonky when you're that close. And we also have field of view problems. In other words, we're starting to see these strip lights and the backlight and this light up here and everything. And it's really messy. By zooming in, it cleans everything up. Our field of view shrinks like we saw in our last episode. And it's really nice and simple. Okay, so the other reason that a wide angle lens messes things up, it's because the relationships between things get all wonky. Now let me illustrate this. Now we already said that Natasha's a little annoyed when I get close to her, and so Natasha, give me your best, ah, stay away. Now watch what happens to her hand. So I'm gonna have your hand about right there. Take a little picture here. Oh my gosh, her hand is gigantic. It's huge. The reason for that is because her hand is so much closer to the camera than her face. It makes her hand look gigantic and her face look really small. That's sort of the distortion that people are talking about. It's not the lens necessarily, it's the distance between the subject and the lens. Watch what happens when I walk back here. We're gonna take the same picture, but now I'm gonna zoom my lens. 
So I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to sit down here. So Natasha, give me the get back. And I'm going to take a shot. Now look, her hand looks more proportional to her head. It looks just like it should. It's a little blown out because it's too close to the light. But you can see the difference there. And so the point of this is, if you're shooting portraits, even in a small studio, you need to get back and zoom in. That's going to put distance between you and your subject. That's going to make things look more natural. It's going to narrow the angle of view. That will clean things up. It'll make your model more comfortable in the space. And everything is going to be much, much better. So the question is, well, what do you do if you want to shoot full length shots in a very small space? Well, my suggestion is find a different space. Find something that works for what you're trying to do. The other question is, is there ever an exception to the rule? Can you shoot portraits with a wide angle lens? Well, absolutely. And that's what we're going to do next. Well, this is the quintessential exception to the rule. It's the environmental portrait. What that means is we want a portrait of a person in their environment. Now, we're going to mimic this by having Natasha here in this kitchen, having her morning coffee, getting ready for the day. And so I want to make sure I get a great portrait of her, but also I want to get some of the surrounding area here so I can put her in context. Now to do that, I am using a 35 millimeter lens. Now that's not an extremely wide lens, but it's definitely wider than what you'd normally use for a headshot or an in-studio portrait. But a lot of people consider a 35 millimeter lens the perfect environmental portrait lens. Now this guy here, I can open all the way up to an aperture of f2. And that's great because with a wide angle lens, that allows me to get nice, soft, shallow depth of field, but not so shallow that this falls completely out of context. I can still see these shapes and, and it's uh, nice and identifiable, but it's also nice and soft. Now, as with all wide angle lenses, this is something that you really should consider as a close up lens. So I'm going to be shooting pretty close to Natasha, but I want to make sure I don't distort her too much by putting her at the edges of the frame. So what I'll do is I'll put her either to the right third or the left third, and then let the scene take up the other two thirds of the image. Now I'm saying a lot of words. Let's put it into practice and show you exactly how you can make a portrait that looks fantastic. Wow, I really like that shot of you having the coffee. You got a nice after coffee smile going on. <laughs> it's pretty good. Thank you so much for joining us, Natasha. And thank you for joining us for this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget to subscribe to Adorama TV. That way you don't miss a single episode like last week's episode that helps us understand what we're doing this week. Also, make sure you check out the Adorama Learning Center because we have videos and articles and things that will help you understand things like depth of field and field of view and aperture and shutter speeds and all that kind of stuff. And all of it is absolutely free. So make sure you check that out. Thanks again for joining us and we will see you again next time.